Hello everybody, my name is Tim McCarthy. And on behalf of my teaching colleagues, John Stauffer and Ian Likas, I'd like to welcome you to English E196, American Protest Literature from Tom Paine to Tupac. John and I have been teaching this course through the Extension School, offering an online version of the course for almost a decade now. And we've been delighted by the engagement of students from all over the globe who've taken this course over the last eight or 10 years. This is a course that seeks to provide a survey of some of the major works of American protest literature, as the title suggests, from the American Revolution, Tom Paine's Common Sense and the Declaration of Independence, through modern day forms of protest around global capitalism, the Occupy movement, modern day slavery, hip hop culture, and a whole range of other cultural phenomenon and social ills and political ills that plague our society in the present. We define American protest literature quite simply as texts that seek to intervene in some way to challenge or critique a social ill or a series of social and political inequities, from slavery and Jim Crow to discrimination against women, labor exploitation, uh, prejudices against LGBT folks, immigrants, Native Americans, and other groups that have been historically disfranchised through American society. But these are texts that not only seek to offer a critique, but they also seek in their own way, either implicitly or explicitly, to offer some kind of a solution to the social uh, maladies and ills that plague society at any given moment in history. This is a course that can't do it all. We're going to look at a whole range of texts from very uh, uh, classical texts like Tom Paine's Common Sense, Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin, John Steinbeck's Grapes of Wrath, Betty Friedan's Feminine Mystique, James Baldwin's The Fire Next Time, Tony Kushner's uh, Angels in America, and other lesser known works that you may or may not have heard of that we will also include throughout the course. That said, this is a survey course, so we're going to try to get at a lot of things in this course and cram as much as we can in, but we're not going to be able to get to everything. This is a course that will provide you an introduction to this genre and tradition of American protest literature throughout American history. One of the other things about the course, it's not just a literature course, it's a course that seeks to place these literary texts as they were within the social and political and cultural context within which they emerged. Some of these texts, like Betty Friedan's Feminine Mystique, Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe, and others, were, had, a, had a catalyzing effect on the social movements and movements for social change that existed in their time. Other texts came later on, once movements had already formed, that sought to intervene in new ways to try to generate new energy on behalf of social and political change in the United States. And so this is a course that tries not only to give you a broad survey, but to deeply contextualize contextualize these forms of protest literature within the currents of change and society that were happening at any given moment throughout the history of this country. One thing I wanted to, to, to address with students who are going to be taking the online version, you will be taking this course through an online platform where you'll be watching lecture videos that we deliver every Tuesday and Thursday in Harvard Yard to Harvard College students who are taking the course in person. For those of you who find yourself in Boston or Cambridge on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 to 2, uh, you can come to Seaver 113 and sit in on lecture in person. You're more than welcome to do that any time that you have the uh, time and availability to do so. Most of you, however, will be taking the course online, will be watching the lecture videos that will be recorded and then posted later on each of those afternoons as the course goes by. Our colleague Ian Likas is going to be helping oversee the online platform for this course. And so he will help to instigate and moderate a whole range of discussions and debates and writing assignments throughout the course of the term so that all of you who are taking it online will be able to feel fully engaged in the rhythm and rhyme and routine of the course. And that's very important to us that all of you feel, whether you're taking it virtually or sitting in the actual seats when we deliver the lectures, that you all feel part of this learning community and part of this educational community. In addition to being able to come to lecture, and you're always warmly welcome to attend the lectures in person, you can also always email Ian, who will be available uh, uh, in an ongoing way throughout the term, and also Professor Stauffer and myself, who are also available over email to have conversations, to answer questions, to be provoked and challenged by you. After all, this is a course on protest, and so we expect and anticipate that our students will be critical thinkers and critical learners, and so we understand that there will be some disagreement with the readings that we perhaps provide, with the interpretations and analysis that we advance in the class. And we welcome those criticisms, those challenges, 
challenges those debates and discussions which only enrich the learning experience for all of us. We will also host from time to time over the course of the term some weeknight sections that are optional for those of you who are in Cambridge and Boston. I know a number of people who take this course are often staff members and other community members at Harvard who are trying to pursue their degrees or just take courses uh, to enhance their educational and intellectual experience here as a member of the Harvard community. If you happen again to be here in Boston and Cambridge, we would very much encourage you and delight in your presence at those, uh, those regular sessions, those optional sessions uh, over the course of the term, where you can come together with us and with some of your other classmates to debate and discuss the text that we've, that we've assigned for the course. So you're welcome to participate in any and all of those ways. Uh, if you're really remote, we've had students who take this course who, who are from Kansas and Iraq and China and everywhere else across the globe. And so if it's impossible for you to actually get to Cambridge or Boston, uh, we want to make sure that we're giving you the best possible education and learning experience that you can get taking this course through an online platform virtually. And so please don't hesitate to get in touch with us, to be fully engaged with the course, to enroll in the course as well. Uh, and we're looking forward to engaging with you and learning from you as well as teaching you throughout the course of the term. We look forward to the term. We look forward to the semester. We start class next Tuesday, and we'll be ready to rumble. Thanks so much for taking the class. We look forward to a great semester ahead. Thanks.